Thanks for tuning in to Your Truth. Last week, we uncovered how many billions of dollars the wars in Iraq, Afghanistan, and Pakistan are costing the American taxpayers. We all know that war costs a lot of money. But what we don't know is that the same people who profit off the wars we create have a direct influence in shaping the foreign policy that keeps America at war, while putting millions of dollars in their own pockets. This is the way our government system is supposed to work. Foreign policy is supposed to be drafted between the President and Congress, and the Secretary of State is supposed to serve as the President's main foreign policy advisor. In the current administration, this is Hillary Clinton. So what is foreign policy? Foreign policy is a set of goals outlining how a country will interact with other countries economically, politically, socially, and militarily. These days, many of our elected representatives have become merely the messengers of foreign policy prescriptions that were created by councils and think tanks comprised of CEOs and executives from the largest corporations in the world. On these councils sit executives from every major industry, from food to media, and most shockingly, national defense. Do you think there's a conflict of interest when the CEOs of major defense corporations are advising our lawmakers on foreign policy? Before you decide, ask yourself this. If you were the CEO of Lockheed Martin, the largest defense corporation in America, and 95% of your company's $35 billion annual profit came directly from government contracts that employ you to supply war materials, would you want the war to end? Especially if you personally enjoyed a $21 million increase in compensation from 2005 to 2008 as a direct result of the War on Terror? Between 2001 and 2005, defense corporations' annual profits climbed 189%, and the CEOs of these corporations that benefited the most from this profit increase sit on councils together with our politicians to recommend, suggest, and prescribe foreign policy. In this segment of Your Truth, we're going to be taking a look at how much influence the CEOs of the top defense corporations have on the shaping of our foreign policy, specifically the foreign policy that keeps us at war. Let's start with Robert Stevens, who we mentioned earlier as the CEO and president of Lockheed Martin, the number one defense corporation in the nation. Stevens is the presiding director of Monsanto, the largest manufacturer and distributor of genetically modified seeds, a member of the Council on Foreign Relations, and a member of the advisory board to the Atlantic Council. So what are these councils? The Council on Foreign Relations is a powerful think tank comprised of the world's biggest CEOs and executives in banking, mining, oil, food, media, real estate investment, and politics. A few of the most recognizable political members include David Rockefeller, John McCain, Dick Cheney, Colin Powell, and Madeleine Albright. President of the CFR, Richard Haas, was the former director of policy planning for the Department of State. CFR board member Richard Holbrook is Obama's special advisor on Afghanistan and Pakistan. According to their website, one of their functions is to sponsor independent task forces that produce policy prescriptions on the most important foreign policy topics. Let's not forget that corporate CEOs do not take an oath to serve the best interests of the American people. Their primary obligation is to maximize company profits. I know we all want to believe that our politicians are incorruptible and won't take corporate dollars that might sway their decision making. But would millions of dollars sway you? According to recent reports from OpenSecrets.org, 151 members of Congress in 2006 had up to $195.5 million of their personal assets invested in defense corporations. So what does this mean? Well, when members of our Congress vote to keep us at war, are they doing it for the safety of the American people, or are they doing it for personal gain? Also, major defense corporations were heavily involved in the 2008 elections. Lockheed Martin gave over $2.6 million in total political campaign donations, with 49% to Democrats and 51% to Republicans. Boeing gave over $2.2 million in 2008, with 58% going to Democrats. General Dynamics provided over $1.6 million to both parties. Northrop Grumman spent over $20 million in 2008 hiring lobbyists to influence Congress, and Raytheon spent $6 million on lobbyists in the same period. Wow, that's a lot of money. I wonder what these corporations expect in return for their campaign handouts. All we have to do is look at the policy prescriptions they draft and provide to our politicians. For example, Let's take a look at one of the Atlanta Council's most recent proposals outlining U.S. policy objectives with Pakistan. Senator John Kerry, who personally has more than $30 million invested in defense companies, and Atlanta Council Chairman Chuck Hagel presented the plan to the Senate Foreign Relations Committee for review on February 25th of this year. According to their mission statement, the Atlanta Council focuses on drafting roadmaps for U.S. policy towards the Balkans, Cuba, Iraq, Iran, and Libya. 
Other than Robert Stevens, CEO of Lockheed Martin, who else belongs to this council? Corporate membership includes the top four defense corporations in America, Lockheed Martin, Boeing, Northrop Grumman, and Raytheon. Another interesting fact is that General Jim Jones left as chairman of the Atlantic Council to work as Obama's national security advisor, and four other prominent officials from Obama's administration are also members, Susan Rice, Richard Holbrook, General Eric Shinseki, and Anne-Marie Slaughter. Need more proof of the revolving door relationship between corporations and government? President Obama recently nominated Raytheon's Senior VP for Operations and Strategy, William Lind, for the number two position at the Pentagon. The current CEO of Boeing, James McNerney Jr., is a sitting member of the Business Roundtable. The Business Roundtable is comprised of CEOs of the top 160 corporations who present government officials with reasoned alternatives and positive policy suggestions. Also, it is not unusual for Business Roundtable members to meet with the President and his staff in private. Northrop Grumman, the fourth largest defense corporation in the world, saw net sales of $7.6 billion in 2000 skyrocket to nearly $34 billion by 2008. According to CorpWatch, at least seven former officials, consultants, or shareholders in Northrop Grumman held positions in the George W. Bush administration. It is also worth noting that in the last 10 years, Northrop Grumman shelled out $8.5 million in campaign contributions to both parties. To spell it out, defense corporations are making billions off war. In the Atlantic Council, the Council on Foreign Relations, and the Business Roundtable, we have CEOs and politicians working together to draft and implement foreign policy. The cozy relationship that many in our government share with the most powerful leaders in the defense industry should be a cause of great concern for every American. If our foreign policy decisions are based on corporate business interests, the voices and opinions of American voters will be sidelined and ignored. Tune in next week to find out what people are doing all over the world to stop the corruption and end the war.